Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cassidy the Cardslinger. Today we're going to take a look at my Harry Potter themed tarot deck collection. So I have these four decks to show here. There is not at the moment a fully licensed Harry Potter tarot deck available, but all of these are done by independent artists that have created different themed decks that align with the books, the movies. So from left to right here, the first deck we have, this is the Little Wizards Tarot. So this is the mini edition that I have by Push Kitty. The standard edition I don't believe is in print anymore. If it was, I would definitely have a copy. So this is a Rider Waite Smith style deck. Then we have the beautiful Wizards Tarot. This is by Paper de Lune. I don't know if this one is in print anymore. I think it has gone out of print, but it may still be available um, on her website. Then we have the HP Tarot. This is by Eleanor Piper. And finally, the Harry Potter inspired fortune telling cards by Wisdom by KK. So I will put links to everything below that is still available or at least where I purchased them from. Um, like I said, yeah, these ones are Rider Waite Smith themed. This one is definitely more of a Thoth feel to it. And this one is a bit, I don't know, wouldn't say it really follows um, any particular set structure. So we'll go ahead and line them up here. I was going to talk about them as I was flipping through, but I don't want this video to be a million years long. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just flip through all of the cards, showing them all side by side. If I'm going too slow and you just want to see all the cards quickly, you can hit the little speed up button here on YouTube so you can just watch the flip through more quickly. Um, here we are, let's get these started. And last thing I'll say, the Little Wizards Tarot here, there are a couple of duplicates of cards, so you can pick which card that you like the best. So I will just pause shortly on each of those cards. Quick look at the back though. Um, so starting on the right here, this is the back of the Harry Potter inspired fortune telling cards. Then we have um, the HP Tarot, the back of it is like so with the four um, emblems, symbols, photos for each of the houses. Then the Wizard's Tarot has the back like this. And the Little Wizard's Tarot has this little back. So this is, you know, the more cartoony, cutesy style, but it is, oh, it's fantastic. You're about to see. Um, so yeah, I will, I will be back at the end for a bit more discussion about each of the cards, but enjoy this flip through of my four Harry Potter themed tarot decks.
Well, folks, there we have it. Um, that was tricky. <laughs> that was a little trickier to do than I thought it might be. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed the flip through. Um, there was, I will just show that again here. In the little, little Wizard's Tarot, there's this planned tragedy card, which isn't that fantastic. Dumbledore falling out of the, of the astronomy tower there with that little sneaky look on his face. So... Anyways, um, I would love to hear your thoughts about the decks below if you have one that you liked the best, one that you liked the least. Um, I don't want this video to be super long, but I will maybe just give each of the decks a quick a quick word. So we'll start, I guess, with the Wizarding Wizard World Tarot deck. Um, for me personally, I don't love words on my tarot cards, typically speaking. Um, that being said, it is a fairly cute deck. It's it's fun to use in readings or as a supplemental deck. I wouldn't use it as a primary deck or, or a solo deck for a reading. I just don't find it's typically strong enough. And there actually is a spelling mistake in one of the cards. That now I think I thought it was the world card. Hmm. Should be at the end here. Well, wherever it is. Um, I don't know that I can forgive that. <laughs> it just, it kind of, it kind of dampers the deck, but I really like the artwork and I like that it tells you who each of the characters are because in some of these other decks, you may be, uh, there may be, have been, there may have been a couple of people that you're wondering who the heck they are. Um, this deck did not come with any sort of guidebook. I don't think it needed to. So yeah, it's, it's not a bad deck. I would say it's my least used of the three, um, uh, because I do find it limiting with the little phrases on there but that being said if phrases are your jam and it has a good mix of different characters through it and it also has the suits uh, separated by house i don't know how i feel about gryffindor being cups i guess it does make sense in in many ways and then we have slytherin as swords yeah okay i could get on board with that and we had hufflepuff as pentacles and then we had ravenclaw as wands mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know about that. I might, <laughs> I might have switched that up myself, but nevertheless, would love to hear your thoughts below um, if you liked this deck or thoughts about any of the decks. So the HP Tarot, as I said, this one is a Thoth-based deck. So if you are uh, familiar with working with the Thoth system, you might really, really love this deck. I'm not as familiar with Thoth, but that being said, the artwork in this deck is absolutely stunning. And I do like that a lot of the pairs were kept as in like Lucius and Narcissa here, the King and Queen of Cups. Um, but one thing that you will find, and uh, Eleanor Piper has a blog on, I can't remember the website, but I will I'll put it in the link below, uh, where she actually goes through each of the cards, says who it is, and then a little blurb about why she picked each of these cards, or designated each of these people for each of the cards and what her thoughts were. And she did mention in her post that she drew a couple of the characters as she saw them, not as they were portrayed in the films. So the example, um, it was Bellatrix. There, there we are. So she has Bellatrix as the Queen of Swords. Because I saw this and I didn't know who this was. It almost reminded me of um, the Red Woman, whose name is entirely escaping me at the moment, Melisandre, um, from Game of Thrones. Kind of gave me that sort of facial feature, but this is supposed to be Bellatrix. So. That being said, um, I do quite like this deck as well. It's very powerful. It's just, I don't know, I haven't worked with it as much as the other two. So I guess I'm kind of working my way into my favorite decks, but the artwork is just absolutely stunning. I love I love how this deck was put together. Um, this one is available now on makeplayingcards.com. And that is, to my understanding, the only place that you can get it that is from the artist directly. When I was looking to purchase it, I saw a lot of knockoff copies available on Amazon. Don't do it, don't buy it, it rips off artists. So if you want a deck that was created by a beautiful artist who put their time, energy, and love into a deck, pay them for it. I am not, I will never condone the purchasing of counterfeit decks. Stealing artists, um, stealing from artists, terrible. So these two decks are definitely uh, my, my highlights, the ones I use the most, the Wizard's Tarot and the Little Wizard's Tarot. So. Very different though, of course. So of course, well, I guess we'll just start with the Little Wizard's Tarot. It's so darn cute. <laughs> the, the, the cards are absolutely precious, but I really love the assignments that this artist chose for the different cards. I think they're just, they're perfect. Um, I think they're, they've got a lot of depth to them. This, this deck does read like a dream, particularly if you're someone who really knows the, the books or at least the movies of Harry Potter, you might find that this deck reads super well. I'm not sure if it's still in print, but I will put the link to her 
website below where I got it. But it's just, it is such a great deck. Um, yeah, and a lot of the assignments, I okay, I also really enjoyed the fact that there are multiples of, of a lot of the cards, as you saw while we were going through the flip through there, because it's really fun to be able to pick. But it captures, I mean, they were just, it's brilliantly done. It is absolutely brilliant. I guess maybe my only gripe might be something to the effect of having Narcissa with, I believe this is Ollivander here, but I mean, I can get past it. I can get on board. Like, you know, <laughs> the Page of Pentacles, or the we 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 Wizard Wheezes. I mean, it's just, it's so good. It's The assignments are fantastic. The artwork is a lot of fun. It is, a, it is not a gentle, shy, squishy deck, though, despite the fact that the artwork is very cute and sweet. I find it reads incredibly well. It's very powerful. I do, personally, um, I always pick one of the cards. I don't know if this is relevant, but... Uh, I would never have a deck that has two of one card in it, despite how much I think these are both fantastic five of wands cards. I would only make sure to keep one in, typically, when I am reading. Unless I messed up by accident somewhere. Alright, so that is the Little Wizard's Tarot. And finally here, that leaves us with the Wizard's Tarot by Paper de Lune. This, I mean, it's so powerful. And I'm sure if, if you are a Harry Potter fan like myself, even as I was flipping through these cards, they are just... They're incredible. They are absolutely incredible. Um, I have I have had some really incredible readings with this deck. It's I know it looks kind of deep and dark, and it is, I guess, a little bit dark, but I wouldn't find it gives dark readings or anything like that. This Two of Cups is spectacular. I just, it's amazing. It's so good. Oh, we've got the Monsters Book of Monsters here. I mean, the Queen of Swords. This particular image from the Queen of Swords, and that picture of... Um, oh, I must not tell lies. Like, oh, it's it's chilling. It's haunting. It's so deep and beautiful. I love that it's got the imagery straight out of the movies. Um, or, oh, look at that. I mean, chilling. Absolutely chilling. You're not going to turn that card over and not feel something in your bones, I swear. So, I mean, you, you can certainly see. And for the Three of Swords, like, wow. <laughs> I could just go through this entire deck and ooh and ah all my way through it absolutely no problem but the well i guess i didn't really talk about the card stock the card stock on all of them is good um not a problem this is i don't know what you'd call this it's not a glossy finish um good card stock this one also has good card stock i don't know they're not bad um this is probably the thinnest card stock of the bunch the harry potter inspired fortune telling cards and these ones aren't bad either but they're definitely on the thinner side as well sorry i usually start with card stock but nevertheless, um, I would love to hear everyone's thoughts below. Do you have a deck that you liked the best? Where you, uh, I don't know, where are your thoughts? Where are my Harry Potter, my fellow Harry Potter fans out there in the tarot community? Would love to hear how everyone feels about these decks. And if you even work with themed decks uh, of this sort at all, would you read with them? Love to have a conversation. So thank you so much for watching. If you want any more information on any of the decks, like I said, all my links will be below. I could definitely do dedicated videos for each of these, but my whole point is just to show them because I came across a post not too long ago uh, where someone in the community was asking what sort of pop culture decks people wish were available. And so many people posted Harry Potter. And I was like, there's, I mean, there's not an officially licensed Harry Potter deck, of course, but I mean, here are four examples of lovely Harry Potter decks. There is one other one that I'm aware of. If I can find the link for it on Etsy, I will post it below. It was a Pip deck. It had really beautiful, um, beautifully illustrated Major Arcana, but it was sort of similar in style to, if you're familiar with the, the Disney Villains deck or the new Alice in Wonderland deck, the Name It Before Christmas, where there's a lot more emphasis on the imagery for the Majors and they are less illustrated Pip minor cards. It was something to that effect, which I was not particularly um, drawn to purchasing, despite the fact that I felt like I needed all four of these. <laughs> so enough rambling. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Comment below if you have anything to say, and we will see you in the next video.